Okay, bad news. You got taken. No time to explain. Let's just get out of here. So you find yourself in a dark cell with a dirt floor and a small window at twice your height. There's no food or water, but there's a shovel. Why did they leave the shovel? Don't ask me, I don't know. Just be happy you have it. (laughs) However, you can't dig your way out because the walls go a long way underground. So how do you get out? You can still dig and make a high dirt pile that will make you reach the window and get out of there. So you do just that and find yourself in a dark corridor. You have nothing to do but to go straight, hoping that sooner or later you'll find the exit and get out of this creepy place. Half an hour later, you approach a metal door. You have to enter the passcode, but here's a hint. Berlin, 600. Paris, 400. London, 600. Rome, 200. Toronto, hmm, what's the passcode? Each consonant in the word gives 200 points, while each vowel takes away 100 points. In the word Toronto, there are four consonants that give 800 together. Three vowels take away 300 points. So the passcode is 500. The door clicks and you leave another obstacle behind. Soon, you approach three more doors. Behind the first one, there's an iron block with a movement sensor that will crush everyone who enters. Behind the second door, there's an electric shocker that never misses. Behind the third door, there's broken glass all over the floor. Which way do you choose? You pick the third door, obviously. You're wearing some boots, right? So walking on the glass is definitely not going to be too hard of a task. You follow the tunnel till you reach the next room. As you step in there, a metal cage falls down from the ceiling and traps you inside. However, there are three buttons there. The red button will open the cage, but it'll also open a door with a hungry lion. The blue button will fill the cage with water for 10 minutes, and only then will it open the door. However, keep in mind that people can only live 7 minutes without oxygen. The green button will set the room on fire, but will open the cage door in 5 minutes. Which one do you choose? You should choose the blue button. The water won't be able to fill the cage because it will just splash outside. You'll only have to wait 10 minutes until the door opens, and you'll be able to get out safely. You turn right and immediately bump into a huge guard. Your heart skips a beat, and you get paralyzed with fear. To your surprise, the guard looks down at you and asks, Wanna pass? Speechless, you just nod. Okay. You see, no one here wants to play riddles with me. If you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go and won't tell anyone I've seen you. Deal? You nod again, and here comes your riddle. What is that invention that lets you see right through walls? That's a window, of course. The guard smiles and says, Beware of the vampires. Then he moves aside, letting you go. Wow, that was close. And vampires? This gives you chills. But you have to keep moving and get out. And again, another door that requires a passcode. Can you crack it? There's a hint again. You should continue the sequence. O-T-T-F-F-S-S-E-N-T Each of these letters is the first letter of the numbers. O for 1, T for 2, T for 3, then 4, 5, and so on. The last stands for 10, so the next four are E, T, T, F. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yep, that's correct. The door clicks open. Move! You get into a huge dark room. All the light comes from the candles the room is filled with. 
The problem is that there are four ways, and again, you don't know which one to take. Suddenly, each of the doors opens and four people walk into the room. There are two men, one woman, and one teenage girl. They all say they're prisoners too, and the other three are vampires. Who do you trust? You should trust the second man. He's the only one who casts a shadow from the light of the candles. The other three don't, so they must be vampires. So you rush to the man and you shut the door behind yourself. It'll probably slow them down for a while. As you're running, the man tells you he's been here for at least three days. The next obstacle is something he couldn't solve by himself, so he couldn't get out. There's just one try, and if you fail, the exit gets blocked for 24 hours. Finally, you come across another door with a robot guarding it. To let you go, the robot needs you to say the password. The tricky thing is that the password is different each time. The man said that as he was hiding in the room, he saw the vampires passing it twice. The first time, the robot said 12, and the vampire said 6. The other time, the robot said 6, and the vampire said 3. When the man approached the robot the last time, the robot said 8. The man replied 4, but the robot didn't let him in. The door got blocked, so it wasn't the right answer. You nod and approach the robot. The robot says 4. What is your answer? The answer is 4. The rule isn't dividing the number by 2, but saying the number of letters in the word. Your answer is accepted. The robot opens the door and lets you go. Again, another dark room. But as you step into it, you get surrounded by eight hungry dogs. In the middle, there's a meat cake standing so high on the table that the dogs can't reach it. To calm them down and make them your friends before they make you their dinner, you have to feed them the cake. But here's a tricky thing. The knife is magical and can only make three cuts. After three cuts, it disappears. Your task is to divide the cake into eight equal pieces with these three cuts. How can you manage that? With one cut, you cut the cake in half and get two pieces. Then you make another perpendicular cut and get four pieces. With your last move, you have to cut the cake in the middle horizontally splitting each of the four pieces into two at once. Heh, <laughs> great job! Now, give each of the dogs a piece of cake and get out of there immediately. You rush to the door and lock it behind yourselves. You're in a tunnel again, and this time there's no light at all. You move in complete darkness, putting your hand to the wall so that you know where to go. You walk like that for at least half an hour when, finally, you see some light. You run towards it and come across another massive door that requires a passcode. Luckily, there's a hint again. But there will be two questions appearing one by one. To get the passcode, you have to solve both of them and put the answers together. Ready? How many months have 28 days? All 12 of them, obviously. Okay, next one. Here's the sequence of letters. S, M, H, D, W. What are the other two letters? S stands for seconds, M for minutes, H for hours, D is for days, W is for weeks. So the next letters are M for months and Y for years. And the full passcode is 12MW. The door clicks and you're outside. Finally! There's actual air and sun. But before you start thinking about what happened and what to do next, a police officer comes up to you. With him, there are two ladies wearing paper bags over their heads. Sir, are you Mr. Jones? The police officer asks. You reply, that's you exactly. However, the police officer looks suspicious. 
Well, we can't know for sure that you're not one of these criminals pretending to be someone else, so we have to test you. One of these ladies is your bride. Tell us which one it is. And now, you finally remember what happened. It was your wedding morning. You were about to get married, and then you found yourself in that dungeon. Well, the problem is that you haven't seen your wife-to-be wedding dress yet, so you can't even tell which one is the right one. Is there any other way to tell? Think carefully. With their faces covered, these girls are absolutely identical. You didn't need much time. You notice that one of the girls is wearing a wedding ring already. However, you and your bride aren't married yet, so she's not supposed to have one. And the one who doesn't have it is yours. Congratulations! The girl removes the bag, and you see that it's really her. Right behind you, the door opens, and the vampires walk out. You're about to start screaming, but they take off their wigs, and they turn out to be your friends. So, was it all a prank? Well, yeah, it was. But don't be mad. You had fun, right? Well, most of the time. A businessman arrived at his office and found that some very important documents had disappeared from his desk. Police suspect three people, Amy, Carla, and Mike. Each of them said, however, that they hadn't even been to the office. Who was lying? It was Mike. Both Amy and Carla are wearing high heels, while the dirty footprints on the floor were clearly left by sneakers. The king of a faraway kingdom was getting old and started to think of announcing his heir. He had three daughters, each with her own virtues, and the king couldn't decide which of them would be the best queen. Then one of his counselors suggested an idea. The king should give each of his daughters a teapot filled with water and the daughter whose pot started to boil first would be proclaimed the heiress. When the day of decision came, the three princesses started boiling water. Two of them really wanted to become the next queen, but in the end, the one that didn't want the throne won the competition. How did that happen? The two princesses who lost were a bit too eager. They constantly raised the lids of their pots to check if the water was boiling. And the third didn't care, so the water in her pot began boiling first. In the busiest street of a big city, there was a shoe cleaner who got lots of clients. He offered his services to everyone for free, but anybody who stopped and took his offer left him money before heading off again anyway. Why did they do that? He cleaned only one shoe for free, and if the client wanted their second shoe cleaned, they had to pay. Aaron was a poor teacher in a rural school. On the 13th of February, the day before St. Valentine's, he unexpectedly received a letter saying that his rich great-aunt had left him a huge inheritance. The next day, three of his colleagues, Sarah, Carrie, and Martha, sent him love letters. Can you tell who was genuinely in love with him and who was only pretending to take advantage of his newfound wealth? Carrie was the honest one. She's wearing a necklace with A and C engraved on it, which stands for Aaron and Carrie. Clearly, Aaron gave it to her as a gift because they'd been dating even before he got the inheritance. Jonathan spent several days in a hospital, although he never even entered the place through any doors. What's more, when he was released, he was perfectly healthy, but still had to be carried out of there. Why? Because Jonathan was a newborn baby. 
A village in the far north has found itself in big trouble. Someone has poisoned the lake, which was the only source of drinking water for the dwellers. When the police arrived to the place, all they saw was a set of weird prints on the snow. There were footprints between two parallel lines. They didn't know the name of the culprit, but they at least knew who they had to look for. Can you follow their logic? The police were looking for a person in a wheelchair and their helper. The wheels would leave those parallel lines, and the helper had to push the chair and would leave the footprints. Jack and his business partner decided to celebrate a very profitable contract they'd recently signed. They both loved hiking, so Jack suggested going to the Alps for a climbing trip. His partner gladly agreed, and Jack took it upon himself to arrange their little vacation. However, the trip went terribly wrong, and Jack's partner got lost in the mountains. Jack couldn't find him, and neither could the rescuers. But upon returning home, Jack was arrested after the police got a call from his travel agent. Why? The travel agent told the investigators that Jack only bought one return ticket for himself. For his partner, he bought a one-way ticket. Someone had broken into Mr. Jenkins' house and taken all his valuables while he was on vacation. His neighbor, Mr. Brown, called the police to tell them about it because he'd witnessed the event. He said he'd come back from work late and saw the lights were on in Mr. Jenkins' house. Mr. Brown knew his neighbor was away, so he carefully approached the window to look inside. The glass was frosted over, so he breathed on it to melt the ice and saw a man in a gray hoodie stuffing valuables into a blue backpack. Then Mr. Brown ran home and called the police. The officers listened to the story and immediately arrested Mr. Brown. Why? The dutiful neighbor had one detail wrong in his story. Windows become frosted over from inside. Then how could he have melted the frost with his breath from the outside? One rainy morning, Miss Riley left her house in a hurry and forgot some very important documents on her desk. She came back in an hour, but the document was gone. She gathered everyone who was in the house that day and questioned them. Ryan, the cook, said he'd been preparing dinner and didn't even set foot in Miss Riley's room. Sal, the janitor, said he'd only come in, turned on the lights to see if cleaning was needed, and left. Rose, the gardener, said she'd been busy watering the plants outside and didn't come into the house at all. Who took the document? It was a collective job. All of Miss Riley's employees were guilty. It was early in the day, so it would have made more sense for the cook to prepare lunch. For the same reason, the janitor wouldn't have needed to turn on the lights. And it was also raining, so the gardener wouldn't have to water the plants outside. There are four glasses on the table in front of you. Each of them is filled with water to the exact same level. And in each of them, there's an object. In the first glass, there's a baseball. In the second, a pencil eraser. In the third, a wristwatch. And in the fourth, a paperclip. Which of the glasses has more water than the rest? The fourth glass. If you take out the objects from their glasses, the water level will drop because they'll stop taking up the volume. The paperclip is the smallest object, so there's more water in that glass. Humanity is coming to its end. The last man on Earth is going about his day, working the field, gathering wood for the fire, making supplies for the winter. At the end of the day, he's getting ready for bed when he hears a knock on the door. 
He isn't scared and goes to open it. Who's standing behind the door? A woman. Mark's best friend, James, lives in another city, and his birthday is soon. So Mark decides to send him a present. James loves playing golf, and Mark buys him an expensive golf club. But there's a problem. The best postal service in his town only accepts packages no bigger than 3 feet to a side, and the club is 4 feet long. Still, Mark found a solution. What was it? Mark bought a square box with a side of 3 feet and put the club inside it diagonally. Jenny's sister goes to a private party to which Jenny wasn't invited. Envious, Jenny still decides to go but finds out there's a guard at the entrance who asks all visitors for a password. She hides around the corner and eavesdrops on the other guests. One couple approaches the guard and he says 11. They reply 9 and he lets them pass. The next visitor is a guy to whom the guard says 6. He answers with 4, and the guard lets him through. Certain that she gets the principal, Jenny comes out of the shadow. The guard looks at her and says, 110. Jenny replies, 108. But the guard doesn't let her through. What's the correct answer? The answer's 90. If you write 11 in Roman characters, it'll look like this, xi. 9 is its mirror image, ix. Same with 6 and 4. With 110, it's cx. And 90 is xc. A man came to the police, claiming that a very valuable briefcase was forcefully taken from him in the street. When an officer asked the man, If he could describe the person who had done it, the man said he was wearing a full motorcycle outfit, leather pants, a thick leather jacket, and a helmet. The culprit tore the briefcase from the man's hands, hopped on his motorbike, and left. Still, the man noticed the criminal dropped something and picked it up. Turned out, it was his glasses. The man took them to the police as evidence. After a few more questions, the man was taken into custody for fraud. Why? If the culprit was wearing a helmet, then how could he have lost his glasses? A married couple were staying at a hotel. One night, they had an argument, and the man went out to cool off but forgot both his room key and his phone. When he returned, he saw an unconscious man lying on the floor next to his and his wife's room door. The police arrived and questioned them both. The wife told them she'd heard a knock on the door and thought it was her husband, so she opened it right away. Then the man pushed her, so she smacked him on the head with a candle holder and closed the door from inside. Still, the police took her into custody. Why? The woman thought it was her husband but still approached the door with a candle holder in her hands. That means she wanted to hit him with it in the first place. Mmm, lights out!